Breaking this morning, Pakistan launches deadly retaliatory strikes on Iran. This comes as the United States hits more than a dozen Iran-backed Houthi missile launchers, redesignating the rebels as terrorists over their Red Sea ship assaults. We will continue to make clear to the Houthis that their attacks against commercial uh, vessels must stop, and we will remain uh, 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 we will remain prepared to take additional actions if necessary. We're live in Tel Aviv with the latest on the increasing tensions. A House committee meets this morning on impeaching Alejandro Mayorkas over the border crisis. Why the Homeland Security Secretary won't be attending. Plus, a sheriff from Arizona joins us with why he thinks this process sends a strong message. Also ahead, a case of mistaken identity? This man, now in an American jail, accused of faking his own death in Utah and running off to the UK to get away with the crime. Why he says police have the wrong bloke. Stop! And a daring rescue. Police saving a little girl and her mom from their dangling car. Um, I don't know. I don't know. This precious four year old more worried for her mom than she is for herself. It's morning in America. And from our News Nation headquarters right here in America's heartland, it is time for News for All America. I'm Marky Martin. And thanks so much for joining us. I'm Nick Smith and for Adrian Banker. We begin this morning with heightened tensions in the Middle East. Pakistan's foreign ministry announcing it conducted retaliatory military strikes in Iran. And officials in that region say three women and four children were among those killed in that attack. This coming as the U.S. military says it launched new strikes on Houthi missiles in Yemen. Let's get right to Robert Sherman, who's live on the ground in Tel Aviv with what this all means for that region. Robert, good morning. Good morning to you, Marky and Nick, and people here in the Middle East waking up to a very tense environment. What Iranian state media is reporting is that nine people were killed in those strikes carried out by Pakistan. Pakistan is taking responsibility for the strikes. Their foreign ministry just gave this comment a brief moment ago. Take a listen to this. Iran is a brotherly country, and the people of Pakistan have great respect and affection for the people of Iran. We have always emphasized dialogue and cooperation in confronting common challenges, including the menace of terrorism, and will continue to endeavor to find joint solutions. So you heard the key word there, terrorism. Pakistan is framing this as an attack on terrorists that are being harbored in Iran. Earlier this week, Iran carried out strikes on Pakistani soil, which they used the same explanation for, attacking terrorists that have been harbored inside of Pakistan, uh, and that that's what the focus was. Not a focus on these two separate countries and these sovereign states, but the entities that are being harbored inside of them. That does not change the fact that tensions are on the rise here. As Pakistan recalled its ambassador from Iran and told the Iranian ambassador not to return to Islamabad, Iran's foreign minister emphasizing that their fight is not with the Pakistani government. Our focus is on the Iranian terrorists on Pakistani soil. Before this conversation, I discussed with my colleague, the foreign minister of Pakistan, that we respect the integrity of Pakistan. We respect the integrity of Iraq, but we will not allow them to play with the security of our country. And to put all this into context, this isn't new between Iran and Pakistan that both have pointed to the other for harboring terrorists inside of their country. This is a significant escalation and a severe rarity to see strikes carried out on the other sovereign soil, which is what makes this entire situation different. And you put that into context with what has happened this week. You had Iran carrying out strikes on northern Syria, which they said was to go after terrorist cells but also in Kurdistan, in Iraq, which they said was to go after a headquarters of the Mossad, which is Israel's spy agency as well. It, it has been a highly tense week, and right now, no indications this is going anywhere anytime soon. All parties involved seeking answers from the other as we await for this whole situation to play out here. Marky and Nick. And Robert, all parties involved hoping that someone can lower the temperature. Robert Sherman Live for us this morning. Robert, thank you. Now to the latest battle brewing between the Lone Star State and the federal government over the migrant crisis. In a new letter, Texas telling the Department of Homeland Security it will not cede operational control of Shelby Park in the city of Eagle Pass. Shelby Park, which borders the Rio Grande, is a major crossing route for illegal immigrants. 
A month after Governor Greg Abbott signed a bill allowing police to arrest crossing migrants, state law enforcement is not letting federal agents into the park unless they're responding to an emergency. Both sides are pointing fingers at each other after three migrants drowned trying to enter the U.S. And House Republicans looking to hold the Biden administration accountable for the surging migrant crisis. Today, the second impeachment hearing of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas gets underway as he and Republicans wrestle over public testimony on his handling of the border. We'll hear from those directly impacted by this wave of illegal immigration. Tom Dempsey has a look at what we can expect. And Tom, it is clear that the secretary is saying, listen, I will testify, but we need to adjust that in some way. Yeah, good morning, Nick. In just a few hours, House Republicans plan to hold this second impeachment hearing against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, accusing him of failing to enforce laws along the southern border. Despite Republicans continuing to demand that Secretary Mayorkas uh, either testify in person or in writing, Secretary Mayorkas does not plan to attend today's hearing. Uh, the hearing today instead will likely feature very emotional testimony, including from Tammy Nobles, whose 20-year-old daughter with autism Autism, died two years ago after police say a 17-year-old MS-13 gang member from El Salvador in the country illegally broke into her home in Maryland and murdered her. In her written testimony obtained by News Nation, Nobles writes, quote, if we had stricter border policies, my daughter would still be alive today. Nothing will bring my daughter back nor fix the pain of not having her here, but I want to prevent this from happening to someone else's child. This isn't about immigration. This is about protecting everyone in the United States. Republicans believe this sort of testimony highlights the need for impeaching Secretary Mayorkas. We have to act on this. The impeachment process is necessary for, like I said in there, to send a message to the administration to say he's not doing his job and we're feeling it. And if this is the way that we have to do it, this is the way it has to be done. The Department of Homeland Security says Mayorkas has offered to testify publicly, but the committee failed to respond. In a statement sent to News Nation, the department accused Republicans of playing politics and rushing to impeach the secretary. It added that Secretary Mayorkas has testified in front of Congress 27 times over the last three years, more than any other cabinet member. We will also note that today's hearing comes after the last fiscal year set a record for encounters along the southern border and New data into News Nation shows uh, January with over 72,000 encounters so far this month. That's a 10% increase over the same time last year. Guys? Yeah, and the Department of Homeland Security calling it a rush process for the man who runs the third largest U.S. department uh, in the U.S. government. Tom Dempsey, thanks so much. We'll follow that closely. Uh, okay, President Trump nearly kicked out of court on Wednesday after repeatedly refusing warnings to stay quiet while E. Jean Carroll was on that witness stand. The writer is seeking at least $10 million in damages over comments that the former president made when denying he sexually assaulted her back in the 90s. Our Dre Clark is live in New York City this morning with the latest on this trial. Dre. Marquis, good morning. Former President Trump's mother-in-law is being laid to rest today in Florida, so we are not expecting to see him here at the courthouse today. Uh, Mr. Trump had asked the judge to delay the trial for a day so he could attend the funeral, but Judge Lewis Kaplan denied that request. Meanwhile, Mr. Trump was here uh, yesterday and got into a very testy exchange with the judge and Judge Lewis Kaplan threatening to have the former president removed from his courtroom. Now, lawyers for E. Jean Carroll first complained that while she was testifying yesterday, Mr. Trump made loud muttering sounds and disparaging comments about her testimony with an earshot of the jurors. Judge Kaplan said Mr. Trump had a right to confer with his attorneys, but asked Mr. Trump to keep his voice down. But after a second warning, Judge Kaplan used a far more serious tone when he spoke to the former president, and that triggered a back and forth between Mr. Trump and Judge Kaplan. Judge Kaplan said here, Mr. Trump has the right to be present here. That right can be forfeited if he is disruptive or if he disregards court orders. I hope I don't have to consider excluding you you from the trial. Mr. Trump replied, I'd love to be kicked out. Judge Kaplan then replied back, I know you would because you can't control yourself in this circumstance. This was Mr. Trump speaking yesterday after court adjourned. And that's a nasty man. He's a nasty judge. He's a Trump hating guy. And uh, it's obvious to everybody in the court. It's a disgrace, frankly, what's happening. It's a disgrace. Happens to be a 
Clinton appointment, but I'm sure that has nothing to do with it. Now, E. Jean Carroll is seeking damages from Mr. Trump, claiming that while in office, the then president said defamatory things about her after she wrote a story in New York Magazine accusing Mr. Trump of sexually abusing her at a New York City department store in 1996. Carroll told jurors she's been receiving nonstop death threats since Mr. Trump started saying negative things about her publicly. She testified she was a respected advice columnist. Now she's known as the liar, the fraud, the whack job. Mr. Trump denies the sexual abuse allegation, saying he never had any interaction with Carol, and the whole thing, he says, is nothing more than a fabrication. Now, Mr. Trump has indicated he would like to testify, and the judge says the earliest that could happen is on Monday. Nick? Dre, thank you so much. A frantic manhunt for the person who stabbed five people in a days-long rampage in New York is over. Police say a 27-year-old person of interest was taken into custody late Wednesday night. The first known attack happened 10 days ago. The second was just after midnight Tuesday. But then three stabbings were reported in the span of an hour on Wednesday morning, setting off a citywide search. One of the victims spoke exclusively to our News Nation station in New York City. He's just mumbling to himself as he's, I guess, following me home. As I'm approaching my house, he stabbed me. All I did was feel like what it felt like a punch to the side, which I would later realize was a stab wound. All five stabbing victims are expected to survive. Right now, it's unclear if the person of interest is in custody and in custody has been arrested and charged. Uh, the first batch of more than two dozen people busted in an alleged high-end multi-state prostitution ring. Uh, they're doing a Massachusetts court this morning. Prosecutors say the suspected clients include elected officials, military officers, high-ranking executives, you name it. Their names have not been made public at this, at this time, but that's going to change. Stephanie Haynes joins us live to explain. So, Stephanie, what comes next here? Yeah, good morning. It could change as soon as just a few hours when some of these suspected clients are due in a Massachusetts courtroom for a probable cause hearing. And that's when we're expecting that we will learn some of the names if the judge decides that there's enough for this case to move forward. And usually in the state of Massachusetts, local media is reporting that these hearings remain secret. They're closed doors, except because of the high profile nature of this case, the judge is allowing the media and some of the public to come in and see some of these hearings. Uh, the story broke last November when the feds arrested three people they believe were accused of running this alleged brothel out of the Boston area and Northern Virginia, which is part of the video you're looking at right now. And according to the court documents, they rented out upscale apartments where the rent was as high as $3,600 a month, booked all the travel for these women to engage in sex work, advertised them as models on websites, which required a client to list their employer and provide references. And some of them paid up to $600 an hour for these alleged services. To the extent that you have politicians, that's ethical consideration. That could be removal from office. To the extent that you have uh, just employees, they could be terminated from their jobs. There's all sorts of issues that could crop up outside of even ultimately a conviction. So reports say that in the state of Massachusetts, soliciting prostitution is a misdemeanor that's punishable by up to two and a half years in jail with a $5,000 fine. The people who are accused of running the brothel network uh, have a little bit of a steeper battle there. They could spend up to five years in federal prison and pay fines up to a quarter of a million dollars. Again, the alleged clients are due in court later this morning, Marky. Ooh. Some lives, some careers on the brink of uh, changing here once this is all made public. Stephanie Haynes, thanks so much. It's do or die for Nikki Haley's campaign in New Hampshire, but she's taking some flack in the Granite State during crunch time, Why some Republicans there are sounding the alarm. And in just a matter of hours from now, a hearing in the high-profile Delphi murders case, how the Indiana Supreme Court could reshape this trial against the man accused of killing two teenage girls. That's next.
Nation Tuesday. The New Hampshire presidential primary starting at 7 Eastern. It's ultimate endless shrimp with another limited time. Flavor drop. New crispy salt and vinegar shrimp. It's all that and a back to shrimp. Now one of seven endless choices. Only at Red Lobster. Welcome to fun dining. New herbal essences sulfate free. Packed with pure aloe and camellia flower oil. Your hair will love. And none of the things it won't. Hair that feels deeply nourished, soft, and lightweight. New Herbal Essences. It's our phone bill. We pay for things that we don't need. That's a bit dramatic. We must tighten our belts. A better plan to save is Verizon. It starts at $25 per line, guaranteed for three years, for a limited time only, only on Verizon. <gasps> sore throat got your tongue? Mucinex insta Sue Sore Throat Medicated Drops. Uniquely formulated for rapid relief that lasts and lasts. That's my baby! Get Mucinex insta Sue. It's comeback season. Good morning with Docolax. Good, good, good morning. Yeah. Try Dolcolax Chewy Fruit Bites for fast and gentle constipation relief in as little as 30 minutes. Making your good morning even better with Dolcolax. As the world keeps moving, help prevent COVID-19 from breaking your momentum. You may have already been vaccinated against the flu, but don't forget this season's updated COVID-19 shot too. After last month's massive solar flare added a 25th hour to the day, businesses are wondering, what should we do with it? Bacon and eggs, 25-7. You're darn right. Solar stocks are up 20% with the additional hour in the day. Ruined. With the extra hour, I'm thinking company-wide power now. Let's put it to a book. This is going to wreak havoc on overtime approvals. Anything can change the world of work. From HR to payroll, ADP designs forward-thinking solutions to take on the next anything. When migraine strikes, you're faced with a choice. Ride it out with the trade-offs of treating or push through the pain and symptoms. With UbrelV, there's another option. One dose works fast to eliminate migraine pain. Treat it anytime, anywhere, without worrying where you are or if it's too late. Do not take with strong CYP3A4 inhibitors. Allergic reactions to UbrelV can happen. Most common side effects were nausea and sleepiness. Migraine pain relief starts with you. Ask about UbrelV. Learn how Amphi can help you save. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein. 30 grams of protein, 1 gram sugar, 25 vitamins and minerals, and a new fiber blend with a prebiotic. This hopelessness is hard to swallow. I'm Allie Bradley at Eagle Pass, Texas. I've been covering the southern border for two and a half years. Not only is it a national security crisis, but it's obviously a humanitarian one as well. Our News Nation crews were here as people were literally fighting for their lives. Hundreds of people are crossing over from Mexico, crossing the Rio Grande. It's important for News Nation to be showing you exactly what's happening in real time. Back to you now on your Thursday morning, two adults and a teenager tragically killed and a two-year-old baby injured when a power line fell onto their parked car. Uh, this was during an ice storm on Wednesday. The Portland, Oregon Fire Department believes they were electrocuted trying to get out of that vehicle. Witnesses report one of the victims was on fire. A bystander was able to grab that toddler. That child is now hospitalized and is expected to be physically okay. There have been at least 11 deaths tied to Oregon's winter storms. But gosh, just tragic and thinking of those family members this morning. And all of that wintry mix, you know, it's hitting the northwest really hard. You got 5 to 12 inches of snow coming down in Washington state, causing multiple slide offs, making travel extremely difficult. Look at some of these shoulders on these highways. Uh, that system, though, it's on the move with winter storm alerts extending from coast to coast right now. Also, a couple of powdery inches of snow. For the plains today, three to six inches near Chicago tonight. So we have to uh, brace for impact here once again with higher totals on the south and the east side of the Great Lakes. Philly to New York City likely picking up several more inches of snow Friday, while an icy mix 
hits Tennessee. So all that to say, my friends, just stay weather aware, yeah. check on the loved ones, stay safe, be smart. Our own Please. meteorologist, Max Shapiro, showed me video of Tennessee, parts of Tennessee yeah. covered in snow and ice in Jackson, Mississippi. I know. Marky, that does not happen. Brutal. Absolutely. Hey, the Supreme Court may be ready to overturn a 40-year-old legal precedent a ruling that could weaken the power of federal agencies. The conservative majority justices heard arguments from a Biden administration lawyer about a decision ordering courts to defer to how federal agencies interpret a law if it's ambiguous. The court's three liberal justices voicing their concerns about the effects of overturning the precedent a formal decision is expected by the end of June. And pressure is growing on Nikki Haley with just five days until New Hampshire's primary, which is seen as make or break for her campaign. Some New Hampshire Republicans are reportedly disappointed that Ms. Haley isn't fighting harder in the Granite State. As NBC reports, quote, Haley has forced a cancellation of two planned debates in New Hampshire. Her schedule is light on campaign stops in the state where candidates typically pick their days with events. And since failing to identify slavery as a cause of the Civil War last month, she has stopped taking questions on stage from voters. Let's bring in national political reporter for The Hill, Julia Manchester. Julia, what I should have said there is that Ms. Haley is usually, uh, people in New Hampshire usually pack their days full of campaign events. And by her choosing not to do this, uh, it could set her up for a disadvantage. Julia, Ms. Haley would have had national spotlight tonight had the GOP debate gone forward. She's been adamant that she will now only debate former President Trump or President Biden, clearly making this a two-person race. But many Republicans do not seem to be convinced in that strategy. Right, Nick, especially coming out of Iowa when she came in third. But when you look at the polls in New Hampshire, she is polling in second place to former President Trump. The Hills Decision Desk HQ average shows her 10 points behind the former president. And in a way, New Hampshire is unique this time around compared to last cycles. You have former President Trump essentially running as an incumbent. He's holding rallies and some events, but he's not doing as much retail politicking as you've seen other candidates do in New Hampshire in the past or in Iowa. And you have Florida Governor Ron DeSantis actually uh, paying much more attention or seemingly paying more attention to Nikki Haley's home state of South Carolina. That's partly because he's not polling well in New Hampshire and there's a strategy or a logic that South Carolina might be friendlier ground for him. However, you're absolutely right. Nikki Haley has a make or break mission really in New Hampshire. She's polled very well in the state. And I think there was this expectation after former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie dropped out that some of his support in New Hampshire could go to Haley. We're seeing that play out, you know, sort of in the polls. However, like I said, Donald Trump still maintains a lead over Haley, so she hasn't been able to close that gap yet. And Julia, you know, so much was made about the uh, early, you know, telling of the results of the Iowa caucus. Uh, and we know that the party is the one who actually controls when those numbers and that information is released. It's not really the media. But we also know that we watched Ron DeSantis's campaign spend a lot of money to do a lot better than they did in New Hampshire. And now the focus is on Nikki Haley. What more do they want Haley to do in these final days before the New Hampshire primary? So New Hampshire is very unique, like it is in Iowa and also South Carolina's early primary and caucus states. It's very dependent on retail politicking, making sure you're going to these more intimate events, events in areas like, um, you know, uh, restaurants, for example, meet and greets with voters and having town halls and, you know, meet, meeting with those voters to get as much one to one or intimate time as possible with them in person. However, um, you know, it's difficult when you're running against someone, someone like former President Trump who has essentially defied that logic. He doesn't feel that he needs to do that. And, you know, if you look at Iowa, he held mostly um, rallies in Iowa, so it didn't affect him as much there. For Nikki Haley, I think a lot of her supporters want to take a traditional New Hampshire strategy and do these, uh, you know, more personalized events, lots of in-person events, uh, meet with voters, continue really what she's been doing in New Hampshire in the past um, up until you know, uh, the primary day, which is less than a week away. And Julia, I want to stick with the former president. I have less than a minute. 
talk to us about something that I read in The Hill just this morning, that the rumors of Elise Stefanik possibly being his uh, pick for VP. Can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, it's interesting because we've seen Elise Stefanik's uh, public profile really skyrocket over the past few years, but mostly in the, within the past couple of weeks and months after that uh, testimony that the presidents of Harvard, MIT, and UPenn gave um, to a committee she was on and, you know, sort of her reaction during that committee. So her star is rising in the Republican Party. She's very much responsible for getting more Republican women to run for office through her own super PAC. So she could be seen as an attractive running mate from that perspective. But very Trumpian, very conservative. Um, you're not surprised that he could be looking at her. And that new young voice that both parties seem to be saying that they want because neither seem to be super excited about 80-year-olds leading their party. Julia Manchester with The Hill, thank you so much. Thanks, Nick. Lawmakers in Washington today holding their second impeachment hearing for Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. And a sheriff from Arizona joins us live with what he thinks this outcome will be and also the message that these proceedings are sending. Watch out. Bring your windows down. You know, we love seeing videos like this because of the heroic efforts made by those who jump into action. A driver crashing into a retaining wall with their front tires dangling over the edge. But guess what? Police discovered uh, someone in the back seat uh, and they tell us about what could have led to that incident. You've got to see this video. Yeah, and some of the audio, too, yeah, from it. Absolutely. From one of the people inside. Unbelievable. And coming up here on Morning in America, we will be joined live by Madison Marr. She is the newly crowned Miss America 2024. Okay, look at her, y'all. She is bad. She's bad. To the bone. Here from the U.S. Air Force <laughs> officer. And, uh, you know, she's a Harvard student about her endeavors and her journey to the Miss America crown this Sunday. We can't wait to chat with her. That's coming up later. Here's why you should switch from Google to DuckDuckGo on all your devices. DuckDuckGo comes with a built-in search engine like Google, but it's private and doesn't spy on your searches. And DuckDuckGo lets you browse like Chrome, but it blocks cookies and creepy ads that follow you around from Google and other companies. And there's no catch. It's free. We make money from ads, but they don't follow you around. Join the millions of people taking back their privacy by downloading DuckDuckGo on all your devices today. Professor Lewis. Dr. Freud. Why would you come to see me if you disagree so passionately with my views? To make you realize that you're wrong. <laughs> well done. Good. You've insisted the very concept of God is ludicrous. An insidious lie. Well, I disagree. Of course you disagree. You hide behind your ignorance. Truth is, you're terrified. We're all terrified before death. Freud's Last Session, rated PG-13. Now playing select cities only in theaters. Kate made progress with her mental health, but her medication caused unintentional movements in her face, hands, and feet called tardive dyskinesia, or TD. So her doctor prescribed Osteto XR, a once daily TD treatment for adults. Osteto XR significantly reduced Kate's TD movements. Some people saw a response as early as two weeks. With Osteto XR, Kate can stay on her mental health meds. Oh, hi, buddy. Osteto XR can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, or have suicidal thoughts. Don't take if you have liver problems, are taking reserpine, tetrabenazine, or valbenazine. Osteto XR may cause irregular or fast heartbeat or abnormal movements. Seek help for fever, stiff muscles, problems thinking, or sweating. Common side effects include inflammation of the nose and throat, insomnia, and sleepiness. Ask your doctor for Osteto XR. Attention, former Marines and family members stationed at Camp Lejeune. If you lived or worked at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina for at least 30 days from August 1953 through December 1987 and have been diagnosed with cancer, neurobehavioral effects, had a child born with birth defects, were diagnosed with fertility issues or more, you may qualify for significant financial compensation. 
Call Saddle Rock Legal Group now to discuss your case. It has been proven that the water at Camp Lejeune during those years was extremely contaminated with toxic chemicals. A new law passed by Congress now allows veterans and their surviving family members to bring lawsuits and potentially recover damages for harm from exposure to contaminated water at Camp Lejeune. Don't wait until it's too late. It only takes a few minutes and the call is completely free. Call Saddle Rock Legal Group to discuss your case now. Call 1-800-773-6677. That's 1-800-773-6677. Welcome back. It's Thursday, January 18th. Let's take a look at some of the other headlines making news this morning. Absolutely. Special K is here with what's in the news. Ooh, mix. Special <laughs> know. K. I like that. Well, let's go ahead and get to those top stories. The DOJ is set to release a report today on law enforcement's response time in the 2022 Uvalde school shooting. 19 elementary students and two teachers were killed in the shooting. Now, hundreds of officers were at the scene, but waited more than an hour to enter the school and kill the gunmen. The report is going to be used as a tool to help first responders prepare for active shooter events. Funeral services for former First Lady Melania Trump's mother, Amalia Nobs, are expected today. The private services will be held at a church near the family's Mar-a-Lago estate. Nobs died January 9th in Miami following undisclosed illness. She was 78 years old. Well, scary moments in Colorado. Police are rescuing a driver and a four-year-old from an SUV after a crash. Well, it looks like this may just be another script that we're on. Let's first talk, well, let's go back to this. You can see the car dangling there over the retaining wall. A new video showing the moment both were pulled to safety. Oh, wow. The driver has since been charged with careless driving, reckless endangerment, and child abuse but officers are still investigating whether the driver suffered a medical emergency before the crash. And that little four-year-old talking in the car to the officers saying, are you gonna get my mom get out? My like mommy, at yeah. four years old, so concerned, yeah. you know, for her Truly mother. Terrifying. But again, yeah. it's one of those situations where we talk about all the time, officers spring into action to rescue those who are in, in need or help. So yeah, thank definitely. God for Great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, right Kelsey. place at the right time. Okay, on Wednesday, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that Texas is allowed to keep floating barriers in the Rio Grande to deter migrants as it reconsiders an earlier ruling that declared those buoys illegal. The court battle underscores just how far apart the Biden administration and state officials are when it comes to managing the worsening migrant crisis along the U.S.-Mexico border. Now, later this morning in D.C., lawmakers will hold the second impeachment hearing against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Republicans accuse Secretary Mayorkas of refusing to enforce the law along the border. For more on this, we're joined by Pinal County uh, Sheriff in Arizona, Mark Lamb, who's also a Republican candidate for Arizona's 2024 Senate race. Sheriff, thanks for being with us this morning once again. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Of course. So I wanted to start off with the fact that Republicans are blaming Secretary Mayorkas for refusing to enforce immigration laws. I guess my question is, how would removing him from office actually improve border security? Because would he not just immediately be replaced with another leader chosen by President Biden in the Senate? Yeah, that's likely. Look, removing him, I'm not sure that's going to fix the situation. But you cannot put somebody in a place and not have him do his job and then not hold him accountable. His job is to secure and manage our borders. He has not done that. He is supposed to, under the Constitution, you know, our United States government is supposed to keep us safe from any invasions. They have failed to do that. We were just down there. We're just hundreds of people flowing across our border here in Arizona every day, if not thousands. So uh, he hasn't done his job. And you can't just say, well, it's not going to help, so we shouldn't hold them accountable. I like what they're doing. They need to hold them accountable and hopefully send a strong message to the next person that if you don't do your job, we're going to get we're going to find somebody that will. Yeah. And so just to clarify, you think this is more about sending a message than it is enacting actual change in the wake of his impeachment were that to come to fruition? Yeah, I don't think it's going to change anything. And I don't know yeah. that it's more about sending a message. That's part of it. But it's about holding people accountable for not doing their job. And Biden hopefully will be held accountable this coming election cycle uh, by not being reelected, because I think he is the real person to blame here. Mayorkas is just one of the uh, bureaucrats under his, his administration. 
I want to go back to yesterday really quick, too. As you know, congressional meet, uh, leaders met with President Biden at the White House on Wednesday to discuss the supplemental aid package. Of course, border security is part of that deal that's on the table here. The meeting didn't really seem to result in much change. I, I, at this point, what concessions do you think Republicans would be willing to make, if at all, to maybe meet somewhere in the middle, or is that completely off the table? Well, I, I, you know, whenever we talk in politics, I think Republicans and Democrats are both failing the American people. And, you know, everybody points the finger at the other side. You know, the Democrats will say it's the Republicans' fault because they didn't pass border security. The reality is they're not doing single issue issues. What they should do is say, we are going to fix the border. This is the funding we need to fix the border. This is what we need to do to it. That should be one issue, not lump it in with Ukraine or th anything else. That's what continues to go on in Washington, D.C. And so if the Republicans don't vote for it because it also includes an aid package to Ukraine or whatever else that you have, then immediately they want to point the finger that they don't want to secure the border. I think that just needs to be a single issue. It's that important to America. Break it off on yeah. its own and let's deal with the border individually. I know a lot of people would agree with you on that and echo those same sentiments. Sheriff, I know that you're in Arizona, but I want to focus on Texas and get your take on this because meanwhile, Texas will be allowed to keep those floating barriers, those buoys in the Rio Grande, at least for now. Uh, that comes as Biden administration uh, officials, also Governor Greg Abbott. Uh, they're kind of, you know, obviously they're sparring, they're locked in an intensely tense tug of war over how to police the border. In your eyes, is Texas overreaching with either the floating barriers or by blocking federal agents from land along the Rio Grande? Because we talked to border officials yesterday who said, listen, Border Patrol agents and state officials, they're not on different teams here. Um, so do you think Texas is, is overreaching in, in some aspects? Well, I think Texas is in a position where they're saying, look, the federal government's not doing their job. We have a responsibility to protect our citizens, not just from terrorist threats or from, from criminal threats, uh, from an invasion, from fentanyl. The list goes on and on. They, they have a duty to do that. And so when the federal government fails, the question is, where does the state begin? And I think under the 10th Amendment, the state has the rights to do things for their state. This is a challenge that has existed for a long time. In 2010, we passed NB SB 1070 here in Arizona, and the, the Obama administration challenged it. It went to the Ninth Circuit. The Ninth Circuit, which usually leans fairly liberal, ruled in favor of them, saying that it's the federal government's job, something we don't disagree with. But what do you do when the federal government doesn't do their job? That's the question here. I like that Texas is challenging it. There's no question the Biden administration will challenge it. It's going to go to court. And I think we need to understand where does the federal government's responsibility and where does the state start to begin when it comes to the federal government not doing their job? Yeah, I think that's that gray, blurry line that a lot of people have been trying to define for themselves as they watch from either near or from far. Uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb, thank you as always, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. God bless. You, yeah, too. you know, again, Mark, I can't help but stress how each law enforcement official that you've spoken with have talked about how there needs to be a policy change. They are not pitted against each other like so many would have us believe. Yeah, it's not just money. Absolutely. Saying you got to turn the spigot off. Absolutely. Yeah, with people. Well, listen, in a few hours from now, a hearing in a high profile double murder case begins. How the Indiana Supreme Court could reshape the trial against the man accused of killing two teen girls in Delphi. I didn't start in the business of hunting fugitives. Crime came to my family. Since then, I've dedicated my entire life to locking up the worst fugitives. I'm John Walsh, host of America's Most Wanted. Now, with today's technology, we can solve more cases, but we need your help more than ever. And this time, I'm bringing in my son Callahan to help. America's Most Wanted, season premiere this Monday on Fox. You can make a difference. Everything we build is from the ground up. Every great idea, every crazy idea, every next idea, every truck and everything in it. Everything you hear, everything you see, everything you feel when you drive it. We put everything we have into our trucks so you get everything out of them. We're Ram. Trucks are what we do.
My mental health was much better, but I struggled with uncontrollable movements called TD, tardive dyskinesia. TD can be caused by some mental health meds. And it's unlikely to improve without treatment. I felt like my movements were in the spotlight. Number one prescribed Ingresa is the only TD treatment for adults that's always one pill once daily. Ingresa 80 milligram is proven to reduce TD movements in 7 out of 10 people. People taking Ingresa can stay on most mental health meds. Ingresa can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, behaviors, feelings, or have thoughts of suicide. Don't take Ingresa if you're allergic to its ingredients. Ingresa may cause serious side effects, including angioedema, potential heart rhythm problems, and abnormal movements. Report fevers, stiff muscles, or problems thinking as these may be life-threatening. Sleepiness is the most common side effect. It's nice. People focus more on me. Ask your doctor about number one prescribed once daily in Gressa. We all eat unhealthy foods and breathe unhealthy air. Most of what you eat, drink, and breathe passes through your liver. This can make you feel tired and sluggish. Your liver is a vital organ that cleanses your body, supports your immune system, and produces your body's energy. Liver Right Liver Aid is the natural dietary supplement that aids and supports liver function and cleanses your liver from impurities in your diet and environment so you can have better energy and better quality of life. Help your liver daily with Liver Right Liver Aid. Available at CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, and Walmart. Introducing Ned's plaque psoriasis. Ned, Ned, what are you wearing? He thinks his flaky red patches are all people see. Otesla is the number one prescribed pill to treat plaque psoriasis. Ned? It can help you get clearer skin and reduce itching and flaking with no routine blood tests required. Doctors have been prescribing it for nearly a decade. Otesla is also approved to treat psoriatic arthritis. Don't use Otesla if you're allergic to it. Serious allergic reactions can happen. Otesla may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Some people taking Otesla have depression, suicidal thoughts, or weight loss. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. With clear skin, movie night is a groovy night. Live in the moment. Ask your doctor about Otesla. Welcome back. Richard Allen heading to court later this morning as a hearing in his high-profile murder case begins. And he's the man charged with the 2017 deaths of teenagers Abby Williams and Libby German in Delphi, Indiana. Kelsey's back with more on what we can expect from today. Hey, Kelsey. Yeah, you guys, an Indiana law professor that I spoke to says that today's hearing is very unusual. Now, Richard Allen claims he's been mistreated. This comes after the judge dismissed his attorneys. Now, Allen was arrested in 2022 for the death of teen girls Abby Williams and Libby German in Delphi, Indiana. Andrew Baldwin and Brad Rossi were both appointed as his public defenders. But when crime scene photos were leaked from their law office, they were dropped from the case and Allen was reassigned to new attorneys. However, an employee of their law office later admitted they took the photos without permission and they were not leaked by Baldwin and Rossi. Now, Allen is requesting three things from the Indiana Supreme Court today. He wants his public defenders reinstated, the replacement of Judge Francis Gohl, and a trial within 70 days. Given what we've seen so far, uh, the judge will not be disqualified from this case and uh, Richard Allen has no right to have his original counsel reinstated, so the trial will move forward under Judge Gall and uh, with a new defense team for Richard Allen. Now, we also know that Allen's trial has been delayed until October to allow his new attorneys to review the case. Now, this hearing will begin this morning at 11 Eastern. Marky. All right, Kelsey, thank you so much. And for more on this now, to give us some more insight in today's hearing is Brian Claypool. He's a criminal defense attorney and legal analyst. Brian, thanks so much for taking the time this morning. Uh, this is being taken up by the Indiana Supreme Court today, obviously the state's highest court months before the scheduled trial in October. How unusual is it for the state's highest court to intervene like this in this case? Hey, Mark, good morning. Great to see you. It is highly unusual because usually in criminal cases, you have appeals heard after uh, there's been a verdict in a case. And this is an appeal 
that's being heard before the trial starts. So it's, it's extremely extraordinary in a criminal case. Yeah. And as Kelsey was just laying out there uh, in that report right before we took you live, one of Allen's biggest asks is that his former defense attorneys be reinstated. They were removed after sensitive crime scene documents were leaked from one of their offices. In your experience, do you think, you know, the quote, gross negligence cited by that judge was enough for the legal team's removal here because of those documents and photos? Yeah, I, I don't think it was enough. And I, I respectfully disagree with the other uh, young lady you had with her view. I think the Indiana Supreme Court is going to permit the previous public defenders to be reinstated and to defend Allen. Why? Because you have a constitutional right to competent legal counsel. Allen has expressed his desire to have these public defenders, number one. Number two, they've already worked up this case since October of 2022. And number three, to your point, yeah. there's, there just simply is not enough evidence to remove them. You had a former employee who said that he grabbed those crime scene photos, that the two public defenders never assented to him doing that. So arguably, the two public defenders didn't do anything wrong. So I think they should yeah. be reinstated. Another reason why they should is don't you want to avoid a post-verdict uh, appeal? The way to avoid that is to let these two original public defenders back on the case. Yeah, uh, you know, Brian, I, I'm not a legal mind, which is obviously why we had you on, but I was wondering, you know, with that question in particular, does this not happen all the time? I mean, are, are crime scene photos not leaked more often than maybe even we know about. Um, does this happen more often than we think that it does? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, to give you an example, I mean, remember, remember the, uh, the, the the President Trump's indictment in Florida with with removing doc, you know, sure. confidential documents. You had you had a few examples of the documents arguably leaked by somebody with with big notes on them, you know, confidential. So that's a perfect example right there. So this does happen often. But that there wasn't gross negligence uh, on on the part uh, of the two public defenders. And look, I think at the end of the day, uh, he, you know, Allen's going to probably win on the 70-day issue as well. If he gets into court and says, "Look, I want a trial within 70 days," I think the the, the court's going to grant that. One thing I think Allen's going to lose on Marky mm -hmm. is removing this judge. There's no way on this planet that Judge Gold's going to be removed. By the way, she was appointed by this Indiana Supreme Court, number one. And then number two, you can't remove judges because you're getting unfavorable rulings. You remove judges, right. for example, if there's a conflict of interest, they might know one of the parties or they're affiliated with, with one of the parties. That's not the case here. Okay, well, we'll see where uh, today heads. Uh, we understand uh, the, the hearing, the commentary will be streamed live for all to listen in on. And as you know, this case has garnered uh, really a worldwide following uh, for these two young girls and justice for them and their families. Brian Claypool, thanks as always. You bet. Thank you, Marky. Growing concerns this morning about a COVID-19 strain reportedly created in a Chinese lab with a 100% kill rate. Hear who has it and why it's being tested and get reaction from a top former U.S. federal health official. I told myself I was okay with my moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. With my psoriatic arthritis symptoms. But just okay isn't okay. And I was done settling. If you still have symptoms after a TNF blocker like Humira or Enbrel, Rinvoke is different and may help. Rinvoke is a once daily pill that can rapidly relieve joint pain, stiffness and swelling in RA and PSA relieve fatigue for some, and stop joint damage. And in PSA, can leave skin clear or almost clear. Renvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers including lymphoma and skin, heart attack, stroke, and GI tears occur. People 50 and older with a heart disease risk factor have an increased risk of death. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Done settling? Ask your rheumatologist for Renvoke and take back what's yours. Avi could help you save. Bladder leak underwear has one job. I just want to feel protected. Especially for those sudden gush moments. When your keys are in the door and your body's like, it's happening. If you're worried about your protection, it's not the right protection. 
Always discreet protects like no other with double leak guards that help prevent gushes escaping from the sides and a rapid dry core that locks in your heaviest gush quickly for up to zero leaks. And it contours to every body. Now this is protection. Always discreet, the protection we deserve. This is what it feels like to file with TaxLayer. Confident you'll get your guaranteed maximum refund. I'm the refund tree. Pick from my branches. Now wait, wait. No! Oh! 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 Nice work, honey. Start for free and get your guaranteed maximum refund. What's my safe flight story? I'm a photographer, and when I'm driving, I see inspiration right through my glass. So when my windshield cracked, it had to be fixed right. I scheduled with Safe Flight Auto Glass. Their experts replaced my windshield and recalibrated my car's advanced safety system. Safe Flight is the one I trust. They focus on safety, so I can focus on this view. Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace. Bye bye, cough. Later, chest congestion. Hello, 12 hours of relief. 12 hours? Mucin XDM gives you 12 hours of relief from chest congestion in any cough, day or night. Mucin XDM, it's comeback season. Now try Mucin X Insta Soothe Sore Throat Medicated Drops. He hits his mark center stage and is crushed by a baby grand piano. You're replacing me? Customize and save with Liberty Biberty. He doesn't even have a mustache. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. This important message is for Marines and family members who spent 30 days on base at Camp Lejeune prior to 1988. As a U.S. military veteran, I'm here to inform you that if you or someone you love has been diagnosed with cancer, Parkinson's, or other serious health issues after spending time at Camp Lejeune, you may qualify for financial compensation. Call now to determine your eligibility. I called to see if I qualify. They helped me a lot. Leaking chemical storage tanks at Camp Lejeune contaminated the drinking water with highly toxic chemicals. Marines and their family members have been diagnosed with multiple cancers and other serious health issues. But there is now a new law that gives victims the opportunity to receive financial compensation for their illnesses without going to court. I finally got some answers. I'm glad I called. You need to call now to see if you qualify. It costs you nothing if you don't win. Call 800-817-9413, 800-817-9413. A disturbing new study out of China sounding alarms worldwide. The Daily Mail reporting Chinese scientists infected humanized mice with a new mutant strain of coronavirus. They killed 100% of them. And former Assistant Secretary for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Dr. Brett Girard, sharing his concerns with our Leland Vittert. I think this study is a potential nightmare scenario. And I think it's sort of the equivalent of the if I did it book for what China did during COVID. They harvested viruses from a pangolin. For COVID, they harvested it from a bat. But in this study, they just didn't look at that virus. They put it in test tubes and allowed it to mutate, 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 mutate. And then they tested the viruses and lo and behold, the virus out of the pangolin didn't hurt anyone, didn't hurt a humanized mice. But now their mutated virus killed 100% and it went to the brain. And that's just the start. Uh, they're boasting about this. And you know where this came from? It came from the People's Liberation Army Medical Center. Now, isn't that a coincidence that it came from there? The final thing that really concerns me is they tell, they tell us, and this is putting, us, putting it in our face, they're telling us that they know why it's lethal because there's two changes in the spike protein, two amino, amino acid changes, but they don't tell us what it is. They're, con they're absolutely hiding that so we can't understand this virus and start making vaccines or countermeasures to it. And by the way, there's no BSL-4 laboratory in either of the institutions that published this study, so they're doing it in unsafe laboratory conditions. I really feel, yeah, and I tweeted this, that President Biden needs to demand the sequence of this virus tomorrow from President Xi, it needs to be given to our researchers so we can make sure that we have adequate vaccines and countermeasures, because this could be a nightmare scenario. And you can watch On Balance with Leland Vitter tonight and every weeknight starting at 7 Eastern, 6 o'clock Central. All right, a story that is so bizarre, 
it could be a movie. A man accused of faking his own death and moving to Scotland to dodge a rape charge. This morning, a look at his first court appearance after being extradited to Utah. Why he's telling anyone who will listen, he's not who police say he is. We're trying to make sense of it all. And also, is a former presidential candidate making his push to be Donald Trump's running mate? How Dr. Ben Carson is finding his way into Trump's inner circle. Is he, in fact, on the former president's short list of running mate picks? News Nation's Leland Vitter is coming up with his take, and this you're going to want to hear. After last month's massive solar flare added a 25th hour to the day, businesses are wondering what should we I'm do. I'm thinking company wide power now. Anything can change the world of work. From HR to payroll, ADP designs for the next anything. When you've tried everything. I was getting chemical pills, bleaching cream. This is melasma. I'm trying to get rid of it. I've tried everything. Introducing Muesli Face RX. Prescription skincare delivered straight to your door. The spot cream is 10 times more potent than over-the-counter and prescription alternatives. So you'll finally see a difference. My skin looks amazing. It's amazing. I'm a loyal customer forever. <laughs> see for yourself at muesli.com slash TV. I'm hearing different ways for me to screen for colon cancer. It's time to use my voice. I've got a choice more than one answer. I sat down with my doc. We had a talk. You just what to say. I asked for Cologuard and did it my way. Cologuard is a one-of-a-kind way to screen for colon cancer that's effective and non-invasive. It's for people 45 plus at average risk, not high risk. False positive and negative results may occur. Ask your provider for Cologuard. I did it. Over 13 million Americans were affected by identity theft in 2022, and the threats go way beyond just credit card fraud. Today's identity thieves can use your information in ways that are easy to miss by just monitoring accounts and credit, like opening loans, transferring home titles, even committing crimes. Someone got my social security number, made a driver's license, and was used for criminal activity. You can do so much with a social security number that I didn't know could happen. They drained my bank account. It was terrifying. You're even more vulnerable than you realize. Your information is exposed through online shopping, banking, even corporate data breaches. No wonder there's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. Only LifeLock alerts you to the widest volume of threats all in one place, like someone trying to use your social security number, open a new loan in your name, or even commit a crime in your name. There was a big yes button and there was a big no button. I clicked, that's not me, and LifeLock took it from there. If you become a victim of identity theft, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will be assigned to your case and work to fix the issue on your behalf. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. All LifeLock members are backed by the LifeLock Million Dollar Protection Package, including reimbursement for stolen funds, personal expenses, and coverage for lawyers and experts up to $1 million. It can be dangerously easy to steal your identity. With LifeLock, it's easy to help protect yourself. I will be with LifeLock forever. Join the millions of people already protected by LifeLock. And for a limited time, save 25% on your first year with promo code 25TV. All plans include a 60-day money-back guarantee. Call 800-710-7530 or visit lifelock.com slash 25TV to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. Right now, get a free footlong at Subway. Like the new Deli Heroes. Buy one footlong in the app, get one free. It's a pretty big deal. Kinda like me. Order in the Subway app today. A man accused of faking his own death and fleeing the country to escape rape charges in 2008 has been arrested and extradited from Scotland to Utah. Yeah, but he denies that he is that man claiming this is a case of mistaken identity. Elizabeth Fran has the latest on this bizarre case. Elizabeth, he's saying, look, I'm not your guy. What in the world is going on here? Yeah, Marky, some things are just simply stranger than fiction, right? You're going to have to stay yeah. with me on this one. So we have some new co court documents this week um, unveiling new details. So we're talking fingerprint identification. We're talking multiple aliases. Nicholas Alveridian, or Nicholas Rossi, calls himself Arthur Knight Brown. He says he's an Irish orphan, 
but he's being held without bail uh, with DNA evidence that identifies him as someone totally different. And it's a backlog of DNA results that surfaced over COVID connecting Rossi to rape allegations in Utah. This was around the same time that he was getting COVID treatment in a Scottish hospital. If you're, uh, if you're familiar with Interpol, you would understand that there's a database that connects uh, suspects in cases such as this. So police say he faked his death. There is an obituary online. Acquaintances in Rhode Island remembered him. They said he had died of cancer in 2020. He, they created memorials. All this while police say that he fled the country. So fast forward, like I said, stay with me. Fast forward, he was in Utah this week. We have video of his first appearance. He was wearing an oxygen mask. This is him here. We would play audio for you, but actually it's it is inaudible, uh, and he said multiple times that uh, his identification is not who the judge says he is. Uh, he did not enter a plea at that time. He just continually said that it is a case of mistaken identity. And although it's very difficult to hear him, he is not shy. He will speak with multiple media outlets. In fact, he sat down with our own Dan Abrams. This was back in April, and Dan confronted him. Here he is with his wife, and I want you to listen to the exchange here. He is not Mr. Rossi. He's never been to the United States. And what about the DNA? And they have the wrong name. What about the DNA? What about the, the there DNA, is no DNA That's inaccurate. So the DNA is making that up? He no, is. no, that, we just heard I that from the, he the... We just played... Yeah, we just played the sound from the prosecutor in Utah who said that there was a DNA match. Yes, he is inaccurate, and we're looking forward to proving that. Okay, so you hear both sides of the story there, Marky. But we talked to Jennifer Koffendorfer. Uh, she is a FBI special agent, a contributor here at News Nation. And she said, you know, you can fake an accent and you can pretend to be paralyzed. He has done multiple times. He can't stand up without the assistance of his wife. But she said, uh, you cannot fake a fingerprint and you cannot fake your own DNA. He is, as I mentioned, he did not enter a plea at the hearing this week, but he is going to be held without bond. There is another hearing uh, his detention hearing on January 26. Marquis, back to you. Yes, you're right. So strange. A lot of different moving parts uh, to this puzzle. That's for sure. Elizabeth Pran, thanks so much. Well, still a lot of big news to get to here on Morning in America, and it all starts right now. Breaking this morning.